So this is another tool belt uh, pillow. It's called Connection Over Content, and I think this is an easy one to talk about in today's world. We hear so much about it. Um, you got to be focused on connection over content. Uh, in an age of information is what we're selling, it's what we're commoditizing, I think we've come out of that age. And I've famously said to teachers, kids don't really need you to learn anymore. And sometimes I say that with, for some shock value. But information is free today. And every kid can tell you how to change a toilet if they want to by just Googling it and watching someone doing it, watching someone else model it. Now, I do believe, you know, teachers are there for a reason. I mean, as this brain is growing, you got to help a kid through understanding. And uh, so I don't mean to shock people when I say they don't need you to learn anymore. But we truly believe that they need you for something even greater with empathy plummeting over 40% in the last 30 years. Maybe we should take a different look at relationships, connection. And kind of this one was built out of Rita Pearson's TED Talk, Every Kid Needs a Champion, where I think Jason mentioned this earlier, where she said kids don't learn from people they don't like. And it's about relationships. And it doesn't matter if it's a restaurant business or the Sweethearts and Heroes game. It's um, everything in life is about relationships. And if you don't make that connection with the kid first, you got a pretty small chance of truly impacting that kid. And I think that, I know that that's the pillow that Jason works on almost every day with every kid, especially the ones that are wilting. Yeah, I think connecting with every kid, even the challenging ones, um, and sometimes we say a little bit sarcastically, even the ones you don't like, and Rita Pearson says they can never know that you don't like them, right? And they're never absent, right? Mm -hmm. So the, I watch that. I have a goal to be like the teacher on planet Earth that's watched that TED Talk the most. Mm -hmm. It's got millions of views, but I've probably watched it around 100 times. It's a favorite uh, of mine. Yeah, yeah, it's just, it's so fun to replay and it just reframes what we do regularly. So anyway, the, um, you know, where I take the connection and content piece was because it's kind of a cliche, but to go beyond that, a lot of schools will say when we book a, a day with them and start building their full value, full day experience, you know, they'll share some of the initiatives that they're focusing on. And many schools uh, that we've been in this year are trauma informed, they'll say. And I don't even like that terminology, although I think it's a very powerful uh, endeavor to become trauma informed. I think that we leave off the words caregiver. And then I also make the connection to locos parentis, which is the absence of a parent. And it's our duty of care to provide the same care that a parent would provide. So it's the connection that we're giving as caregivers with the same duty of care expected by law in the absence of a parent that a parent would provide. So I go beyond the idea that we're trauma informed or that you know we, com we comply with, the, we make a safe and secure environment with the school code of conduct or we comply with the bullying laws and legislation. I think it really comes down to the connection that you have. Do you know the kids, the, the name of the kid's dog? Do you, are you, um, you know, Stephen Covey and Rita Pearson's talk, she, he says, she references his quote that no significant learning can uh, happen without significant relationships. Um, so I think that um, it really is a bit cliche, but it's easy, it's convenient for me to tell you about my state tests. It's easy for me to complain about my observations and how that will look in my APPR score in New York State. It's, it's convenient for me to get stressed out about GPAs and student performance and high performers and parents. I think it becomes like, why didn't you exercise today? Because I was tired, I don't have time, I'm not motivated, I feel sick. And I'm not, and those are all real relevant reasons why I've not trained or gone to the gym before. But I think they're also um, excuses. And I think that you have to push yourself and um, you have to push yourself to connect to kids. And we know that the benefit will be an easier delivery of the content. So how do you connect with kids? How do I, you do it? I think that it all depends on the kid, but I think you got to find, way, you know, like Tom mentioned, his in was the fact that this girl had a $100 bill with a picture on it. You can certainly look at a kid and tell, you know, what their interests might be based on the way they're dressed. And, you know, all uh, kids are seeking some form of significance or belonging or acceptance to a pack. And when you can kind of look at a kid and see that they're wearing, you know, $150 sneakers, or you look at a kid and see they're wearing 
flip-flops, you know, you might be able to make kind of figure them out a little bit and ask a question or start a conversation. And, um, you know, it's our, I think it's our civic duty to uh, find a connection and you just got to thumb through. Um, it could be something as simple as, geez, you got red toenail polish on. Red's my favorite color. And, uh, you know, you just did a half smirk. And I why I was late. <laughs> <laughs> and it paid off. I referenced it. Well, imagine if they story, weren't painted, I wouldn't have been able to connect. Um, so, what do you say to the teacher who says, "I'm here to teach math, not to make friends"? Like we're all teachers of literacy. We're all teachers of humanity first. Hmm. And I think that there could be no more relevant lesson than the lessons that we get in humanities. And uh, I think we, that. Um, I, I understand that, uh, and I am just a physical education teacher, but I would argue that my discipline is one that will exist when they're 90, that will exist when they're 80. Um, so, you know, we can all fight about whose subject area is more important and whose job is more relevant, but truthfully, it's the humanities and it's the, the uh, behaviors that we model that is most important. And what about um, an educator who um, doesn't have the gift of gab or doesn't know how to connect easily? How do they push through the discomfort of connecting with kids and like learning Corella, the dog's like name? Like Cruella Deville. Sure. Yeah. How do you? What do you say to Cruella Deville who just yells, "Where are you going?" To kids. You know what I say to her? The same thing that one of my best bosses ever said to me when I picked up the phone and called him, and I couldn't stand dealing with this guy who was old enough to be my father. He was giving, and I just couldn't deal with him anymore. Like, always caused issues at work. And I called my boss. I said, Paul, I'm just, I'm done with this guy. And he said, Tom, I hired you to deal with the tough ones. He said, I could have hired anyone to do that, to deal with the easy ones. He's like, I wouldn't need you. Hmm. He said, I need you because you have that ability. And I was, I was so furious. I think I bit my lip and, <laughs> and I was going to start to bleed if I didn't let go in a few seconds. Um, and I just hung out there in silence on the phone and as I reflected on, he was right. That's why he hired me. And that's why you got into teaching, right? So that's what you would say to teachers? Yeah, I would say, I would say that's why you got into teaching. Mm -hmm. You didn't get into teaching just to get the pension, did you? How's that going to work out for you? <laughs> you didn't get into it to, to work a second job, did you? Mm -hmm. Like we just talked about? Mm -hmm. What did you get into teaching? Are you asking me? Yeah, sure. Because I love working with kids. That's right. And that's why she probably got into teaching too. But she lost it along the way, along mm -hmm. this journey of life when adversity hit her smack in the face and she didn't know how to deal with it. Yeah. We talked about mindset and 60% of a performer's results come from your mindset. Mm -hmm. And uh, nothing in education, with the exception of maybe a keynote at a conference or on a PD day, a professional development day, there's like this blurb of like, some really um, powerful social emotional stuff that invests in the teacher's mindset, the the bus driver's mindset, or the lunch monitor's mindset. And, you know, lunch monitor is a tough duty. And when I hear stories like that, I don't judge the woman that he's referring to as Cruella Deville, even though her her um, style might have some work you know uh, work uh, to do, or a little bit uh, her effectiveness might have a lot to be desired. But the the thing is, is I feel bad for her because mm. there hasn't been a lot of investment or training. Now, we train support staff. We train bus drivers. And they're, especially more than teachers, they are above, like, over, uh, you know, uh, energized about the tools and strategies and perspectives we give them. And they look at this job. You know, you're delivering. You're, you're delivering to school and delivering home someone's most precious cargo as a bus driver. And you have the opportunity to start their day and bring and drop them off at school feeling good about what they're about to go do versus reckless endangerment and setting them up and lighting the the wick and sending them inside to have an explosion because they had the most stressful toxic bus experience ever because you slam the brakes to make them all pay attention mm -hmm. yeah i deal with the bus the buses and the bus company a lot there's a lot of work to be done there for sure but i think we always have to come back to what tools has that person been given right. to work with kids in a successful way and i think about the corella deville lunch monitor person who's barking at kids 
I think it's less of a f of her fault and more, why isn't someone checking in with her and seeing what's going on in sure. her life? Why isn't she supported by her administrators or you know the people that supervise her? And also, why hasn't she been given the, the tools to, to interact with kids better and ask mm -hmm. them questions so that right. they aren't having a bad experience? That's a broken window, I think. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. The whole window's gone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it's repairable. <laughs> it is repairable. I just have to put new paint in it.